Welcome to ServiceNow Tech Bytes, bringing you an inside look at our products. I'm your host, Steve Miller. Today, we're going to talk with product manager Mark Popper about how ServiceNow is adding the power of Gen AI to user experiences across the entire spectrum of our products. Stay tuned. Hi, everyone. Today, I'm happy to welcome Mark Hopper to our virtual studio. Hey, Mark. Thanks. Happy to be here. How are you doing today? Doing great. Before we start talking about Gen AI, I wonder if you could tell our listeners just what it is you do here at ServiceNow. I'm part of the platform organization. My team covers outbound product management for the AI and generative AI engines within the platform. Okay. Do you work in a particular ServiceNow location or are you remote? I work mostly remote. I'm in the Bay Area, east of Oakland. Love it over here. Lots of opportunities to be outside and mostly just here, you know, work for service now and spending time with my family and our dog, Cody. All right. To set the stage for our chat, I wonder if you could just outline for our listeners what ServiceNow overall approach is to AI. It's a very popular topic with our customers. And I think one thing that a lot of people don't realize is they're not new concepts to ServiceNow. So we've had AI frameworks in our platform and in use within our application since 2017. It's really uh, a core element within the platform, leveraging all the data that exists in the ServiceNow instances, empowering, like I said, many workflows for a number of years. Generative AI also isn't new to ServiceNow. We've been working on this for a, a few years through an acquisition of Element AI back in 2021. I think one thing that also comes up quite a bit as our strategy around AI is really not to provide them necessarily as just open frameworks. We really focus on the utility of these technologies to deliver business outcomes. With our customers, that goes from identifying task trends to automating repetitive tasks and also allowing end users to better self-serve themselves wherever they are. Specific to generative AI and our initial strategy, We've really been focused on a few key pillars, and those are supercharging agent productivity, reimagining self-service, and then a lot of exciting opportunities to democratize creation of workflows and coding. So developing without code would be the third. Okay, looking across our product landscape then, in light of what you were just saying, what would you say the top application for Gen AI is right now? You know, across those three pillars, I think each customers, they might prioritize them a little bit differently. As part of this generative AI initiative, we already have in market and in product capabilities that serve all three of those pillars that I mentioned. But one, of course, like supercharging agent productivity, we've seen a lot of customers deploying a whole suite of skills that are powered by generative AI. And when I use the term agent, it's really for people maybe that don't know ServiceNow that well. So this could be like a field service technician or a level one or level two agent that would be sitting or covering your IT help desk or your HR cases, customer service, operations management, you get the idea. Anyway, these agents, they're responsible for delivering a resolution to an end user issue or to a work order. And what's cool about generative AI, and you said, what are some of the use cases that people are deploying? These fulfillers, they, they have a lot to consume to come up to speed. They've got case history or chat history. They may have to like search through manuals or knowledge base articles. If one of these cases is handed over and, you know, as an end user, you're probably familiar with the experience where you call somebody and they can't help you and they've got to transfer you. Then that second level agent has to come up to speed on everything. So there's a whole set of generative AI functionality that can really enable these agents to come up to speed so much faster through summarizing all these different types of materials, whether it's chats or manuals and search and whatnot, and to give them guidance on how to resolve them. On the other side of that equation, when the job is finished, the generative AI can automate the generation of closure notes, which also improves like the overall system intelligence. Generative AI can take on the burden of generating future kind of like knowledge articles that can help avoid similar issues. So at the end of the day, it really decreases resolution. It saves costs and it just delivers a much better experience to both agents and end users. So it really contributes a lot throughout the execution of the task on the ramp up stage and on actually executing the task itself. And then at the end, wrapping it up. Absolutely. That particular application, that sounds like a, a real double win for the company in the sense that it makes things a lot easier for the agents themselves. 
and it cuts the cost of the operation for the company, and it contributes all that knowledge and experience to the company for future tasks, similar tasks going forward. So <laughs> covers the whole range there. Yeah, the business case driver around generative AI on that agent side is really strong. So it's it's not uncommon that we'll have customers or new customers that are still operating by taking in cases through email or phone. And so the cost benefit around transforming that experience with generative AI is really powerful. You also mentioned self-service. What are we doing there? In that self-service pillar, we've shipped a number of skills that really reshape what that end user chatbot or search experience looks like. It's just much richer, much more intelligent. In the past, customers that are building out chatbot type experiences, they have to script out and be much more specific about how that conversation will flow. It's what we would call a topic. And you might think about it more as a use case. And with part of that, you'll have to script out every question and answer. You'll have to train the model to understand all the different synonyms and different ways people could say it. So it could be a lot of work. But with generative AI, the need to script out that conversation greatly diminishes. And you also don't have to handle training in various language model. In the case of, say, like a catalog request, and that's catalog is, a, is probably one of the primary ways that people try to self-serve. The user wouldn't have to walk through this kind of like step-by-step -step guided conversation. They can really just state out what their need is or their question. And the generative AI engine can parse that entire statement and only follow up with questions on any missing fields, as an example. A common use case is an end user in a company needing access to a particular software or maybe ordering a device. So if a user was ordering an iPhone, a previous conversation might ask individual questions of each field that is required in the, that catalog item. So what color, what size phone, where to ship it, what's the business justification, things like that. And they might even require the person to go in a particular order. With generative AI, a user could just say, I need to order a green largest iPhone with the biggest memory I can get. They can really put it into any of their own words. And ServiceNow Virtual Agent now already knows which phone model, which memory size, which color that you needed. And so its reply might be only that missing item, which could be the business justification, because we also already know where you live or where you work, where, what your default address is. So the setup is also much easier. As I mentioned in the past, customers would have to go and build out conversations. They would have to uh, train models and whatnot. Since that's really already done with the conversational catalog, you can really set up the virtual agent in as low as, you know, certainly under an hour. I've seen some customers do it in their test environments in 15 minutes, and they can start self-service immediately. All right. We've talked about agents and self-service. At the top, you also mentioned uh, developers. How are we using Gen AI to help those folks? Yeah, this is a, a very exciting area because one of the things I often hear from customers is one of their consistent challenges is the ability to hire ServiceNow proficient developers. And they're kind of slowed in their ability to transform their business by creating custom-built workflows and things like that. Customers want to do more with the platform. And they want to expand the number of workflows they're running, expand the number of the departments that are leveraging the platform, and so on. You mentioned Now Assist. So one of the things that we have is this product or suite. It's called Now Assist Creator. We use the word creator for a reason because it's really democratizing the way more people can build and create on ServiceNow. If your classic developer has to write a lot of JavaScript code, and we have this skill or we call code generation and there a developer can express the needs of what they need to build in an application in a sentence or in a paragraph and now assist will generate service now code that can then be reviewed and deployed so for an experienced developer it greatly accelerates the ability for them to write code for a less experienced developer it starts to open up the ability to create new applications and that entire suite will not just generate code, even higher level frameworks, right? So we talked about catalog earlier. The cool counterpart to that conversational catalog is a feature we have called catalog generation. So now, you know, you can just describe in a sentence or a paragraph 
the need for some new catalog item and it'll generate the catalog item for you. Same thing for playbooks and workflows. So it's a really powerful tool set and we're seeing a lot of traction with customers around that particular capability. This is really great to hear because I know that reducing the amount of code expertise that would be required, that's been a priority for the company for a long time. It sounds like Gen AI has just really turbocharged that effort. Absolutely. All right. We hear a lot about commercial Gen AI tools like chat GPT, things like that. And those are making a big splash, but those public tools aren't always so well suited for business applications. How are we addressing that? Yeah, we've heard from many customers that they're essentially uncomfortable with the concept of taking data off their service now instance and sending it to a third party public generative AI service. So our strategy really has two important constructs. And the first, I know I've used this term a few times already, is what we call skills. So those are essentially out of the box, ready to deploy use cases. You can think about them as pre-built prompt that we've done extensive testing around how to like actually execute on behalf of that agent or end user, plus some user interface. And these are focused on very specific enterprise oriented tasks. Again, going back to even the earlier statement we made about how we focus around AI, which is to deliver uh, particular business outcomes. The second construct to the skills is enterprise specific models um, that are tuned and managed by ServiceNow, running in ServiceNow's dedicated data centers and infrastructure. So you would hear the term we talked about now assist being the umbrella brand for generative AI. But we also have now LLM, which is really our high level branding for all the various fine tuned large language model service now is operating. And these two constructs are closely coupled. The skills paired with the model deliver those business outcomes that I was talking about earlier. All right, well, when we were chatting earlier, you mentioned that there was a lot of interest in Gen AI at Knowledge24 among our partners. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, it was front and center. AI was a big focus of Knowledge24. We had record attendance. Many of our customers rely on our partners to deploy and manage their ServiceNow implementations. So in addition to Knowledge, where we had keynotes and a number of sessions with partners around Now Assist, we also held a set of dedicated webinars and boot camps with our partners that's really set records for attendance. And you can actually already see many of our partners already working with Now Assist. All right. Well, that's great to, to hear about the adoption side of things. It sounds like our efforts in implementing Gen AI across our spectrum are paying off there. I can imagine our listeners saying, all right, this all sounds great. How do I get started? What would be your advice there? If a customer is looking to get started, first, I definitely recommend they connect with their account team. But if they wanted to start exploring on their own, we have a lot of resources that are published. There's a series, for example, of Now Assist courses and certifications on our learning platform called Now Learning. There's an entire generative AI section on our community site under Platform AI Forum. And then we have other materials on our website and product docs, et cetera. So there's, there's quite a bit out there for them to get their hands on. Well, during our chat here, you've hinted at a lot of different developments here at ServiceNow. I wonder if you could tell us a little more about that. What else new is going on? So one of the things that we're doing with generative AI that's a little different is we're iterating quite quickly. And so we're releasing new skills and models every quarter. And you'll continue to see that as a core part of our strategy. If you were asking about what's coming and some of the other future developments, if you attended Knowledge24, then they were treated to a lot of previews of you know a number of new innovations that are coming in 2024 and 2025. If you weren't there, I'd encourage anyone that wants to see these to watch the keynotes. They're all posted actually on our website. All the keynotes highlight a new area of innovation, you know, across all these different pillars that I mentioned and some many exciting experiences, whether it's multimodality, auto generation of content on behalf of the various users, a whole set of new skills in that kind of creator category where you can write a text to create anything. So whether that's analytics or applications, there's just a lot coming there. Okay. It sounds like the, the pace is matching the pace of Gen AI in general. It's something new every week. Yeah, no doubt. All right. Is there anything else you want to mention? We're a platform company and we really encourage, you know, innovation, both with our customers and our partners. It's important to note that Generative AI, it is an extensible system at ServiceNow. So if there's other models that customers 
would like to connect to their instance, that is an option. It doesn't just have to be one of the now LLMs that serves that managed. So if there's particular model customers are running on Azure or Google, or they have their own complete fine-tuned model, you have the ability to augment now assist with that. We also have quite a bit of tools that allow customers and partners to build and create their own custom skills in addition to all those kind of now assist skills that I talked about that are out of the box. Well, before we wrap up, I wonder if you could uh, tell us where we can go to get more information on all this. Absolutely. I mentioned earlier, so that on our website, there's a, a whole generative AI category. That would be one area, product documentation and the ServiceNow community. The other thing I would maybe a selfish promotion is my team runs what we call AI Academy, which you can sign up for it on the community site, but the replays are posted on YouTube. And based on like high customer-based feedback of what the use cases that we see customers trying to do, we actually build them out live on instances. We take questions and those replays on YouTube, we often hear are a way that many people learn how to work with our products. I'd also encourage people to follow AI Academy and we'd love to see you on the next one. All right, Mark, I want to thank you very much for coming and joining us today. Uh, this has been a great uh, way to uh, bring us all up to date on a topic that's moving forward very fast. I really appreciate it. Thanks, Steve. To learn more about any ServiceNow topic, take a look at our product documentation or knowledge base or our ServiceNow support YouTube channel. Thanks for listening.